Good morning. Get started in just a little bit. Y'all must all just be experts now at all of this uh, techie stuff. <laughs> I would say reluctantly. Yeah. 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 Our eyes are pretty swollen by the time we're done our day. Looking I know. Oh my goodness. We do um, a lot of research. We, we review our teachers' learning portfolios in order for recertification to take place. And yeah. We've resorted to doing those by phone. Just yeah. because we can't, um, I just can't look at, at this computer screen that yeah. long. Yeah, I've definitely learned how to use the phone again. Um, for a while, the phone had a de decreasing presence in my life, but it's yeah. it's moving back up. Yeah, I would agree. We'll soon learn to appreciate the phone more than uh, than in years past. That's for sure. All right, here we go. All right, Jordan, you let me know if I mess anything up. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Hey, Mel. So we're waiting for uh, Susan, right? Um, yes, it, although I kind of have a, let me look and see. I have this slight memory that she either was double booked or couldn't make part of it or something. Let me look. Yep, she can't join today. Okay. So, okay. So we are all here, correct then? So let's start the meeting, all right? Sounds uh, good. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody uh, uh, for joining us today. Uh, again, this meeting is going to be recorded and will be posted on the commission's website. Uh, before we begin, we need to kind of take the role of everybody that's here. Uh, let me let me start. Uh, I'm Mel Myler, and I'm by myself in my home office. Uh, Corrine, you want to go ahead? Sure. Corrine Cascadden, I'm in my home office as well. Uh, my six-year-old grandson is hopefully watching Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> David? Uh, hi, David Ryan. I am in my office at 30 Linden Street in Exeter, and I am alone. Uh, Dick? Yeah, the Dick Ames, I'm in Jaffrey, I'm alone, uh, and I should say that I may drop off at some point along the way here. Good. John? Uh, John Morgan, I'm in my uh, bedroom slash home office slash child classroom. <laughs> <laughs> currently, currently alone, but uh, not very long. Thank you, Jordan. Jordan Hensley here in Dover, uh, just me in the room here. Bruce? Yeah, Bruce Mallory, Kittery Point, Maine, <clears throat> all alone today. Everybody else went to Boston. Michelle? Michelle Holt Shannon in Dover. Um, I'm here with my dog, Archie, and there may be some in and outs, but no one's hanging out with me. My daughter and my spouse are in the house somewhere. Great, thank you. Uh, please note that uh, uh, there will not be a period for public comment during these meetings. However, uh, folks who are listening to this uh, um, conversation can go to the commission website at the Carsey School at UNH and provide a comment 
uh, that will then be forwarded uh, to this particular work group. And I would, those of you that, uh, those that are listening here, I would strongly encourage uh, people to go to the website because it is, uh, it is filled with very rich information about the whole concept of school funding. All the court cases are there, plus other uh, links to issues related to um, uh, school funding. It's, it's, it's really a, we've done a good job in pulling together a lot of information. Um, so let's, first of all, then next go to the issue of our group agreements. Uh, we always kind of review these before our meeting and, they, and I'm gonna just review these very quickly. Uh, one that we all need to listen first, you need to be open-minded. It's okay to disagree, but don't personalize it. Focus on the idea, not the person. And if you disagree, consider asking a question rather than arguing to prove your point. Uh, we need to accept that uh, working through conflict uh, to its resolution is a catalyst for learning. It's okay to put issues of race and class on the table. Uh, be purposeful uh, and to the point. Notice that if you are conveying, notice what you're conveying, and if it's not pertinent to the topic of hand, then don't bring it up. <laughs> uh, take risks, be raggedy, make some mistakes, then let it go. Uh, we all share the responsibility for making our work uh, productive. Any questions on our group agreements that we've been working on since we've started the commission? And none appearing. Uh, welcome, uh, David. You want to introduce yourself and where you are to this morning. You're talking about me? I'm talking about David Luno. Oh, and where I, what do you mean where I am this morning? Well, I mean, where are you in your home office? Yeah, yeah, you're... I'm just right here at home. So, okay, okay, uh, good news. You know, with Ozzy the long-haired dachshund. All right. And, uh... <laughs> All right, so now the next item on the agenda is to approve the um, uh, notes of our May 7th meeting. Uh, they were forwarded to you earlier. Are there any questions? around that or any additions or uh, changes? Uh, none appearing, I need a motion to approve those minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay, moved by uh, Corrine, seconded by uh, Dave Ryan. Thank you very much. Uh, all those in favor do, I think we just take a voice vote on this, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, Corrine Cascadden, yes. Okay, uh, you have to un unmute mute yourself, guys. Oh, darn. So, to, to so actually, all votes do have to be roll call. Oh, do they? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Jesus. All right. Okay. All right. So, Corrine says yes. David, your vote? I abstain. I was absent. Okay. Uh, John? Yes. Um, and I think those are the members who are on the work group, but Dick is not on the work group. All right. Uh, the calendar. We do have a um, potential meeting scheduled for uh, this coming Thursday uh, from uh, three to five. From three to five, uh, if we need it. So let's just kind of hold on that and revisit this at the end of this particular session to see if in fact we do uh, need to, to have that session. So now we're gonna begin to move um, to the review of the task at hand. And one of the tasks that we have is looking at the um, uh, 515 um, note that was sent out to you, the draft of the scope of work uh, for the AR, AR Commission study of school funding. Uh, it's an 11 page document. Uh, and we're trying to have each work group kind of look at the scope of work to see if there are some additions, some, uh, some additions or editing that we want to have. This is a very important document because this really this provides what AIR is going to be doing and helping in our study. Uh, are there some any comments that we would want to make at this point in time? Each, each work group is going to be looking at this and any changes or modifications will then be related to the next work group so that hopefully uh, by uh, the middle of this week we will have confirmed uh, the scope of work and this basically becomes the uh, groundwork for the contract that we have with um, AIR. And for those of you that may be listening, AIR is the recommended vendor that we are gonna be using to um, uh, do our statistical work that will help us make the, the decisions. AIR stands for, I believe it's the American 
Institute for Research. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a group that's, um, we, have, we have basically two different vendors that we looked at that responded to our RFP and the re recommendation is that we go you know, with AIR. So focusing on the scope of work document, are there comments from members of, the, of our work group regarding this particular document? It's, 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 it's very detailed. There's no question about that. Uh, D uh, Dave Ryan? Ryan? Um, I agree. I mean, very detailed. Um, I'm, I guess I'm not questioning. I guess I'm going to be conservatively optimistic that all of the deliverables will be accomplished. Yeah. Um, given the scope and the magnitude and the complexity. Um, I understand AIR's background. I know some of the uh, backgrounds of the people that are going to be doing the work, but I just, given the complexity of this issue that we've been wrestling with for so long, um, just going to, I, I wonder what is plan B in the event that all of the deliverables are, how is the commission going to work through the result should the result not be what was intended by the proposal? Does that make sense? That's a good question. I mean, it's, it's obviously, as you look at the scope of work, it is a very um, comprehensive and very aggressive. As we've talked with AIR, they're convinced that they can, in fact, meet this shortened deadline that we do have. I mean, David, uh, Luno, you want to comment on that? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Cause you, cause you, Dave, David has basically been in direct contact um, with them uh, more so than than most of the other members have. No, well, um, not well. Yeah, because because I was on the um, you know right. the RFP review team and the and the proposal review team, we certainly spent a lot of a lot of time with uh, with AIR. Um, uh, I and Dave, I think that's that's a that's a really important point because. You know the two things that I think are relevant here is time and cost. You know, in terms of getting this done. So, do we ask for too much stuff? That turns out the um, the the uh, the price of the contract just can't afford to pay for, or or that it's just going to take too long to to do. Um, there's a. I, I guess I want to step back for a second and and sort of lay out where we were uh, when we when we took a look at essentially the five deliverables. That um, that we're we're looking for in this um, in this contract with AIR, and those were defined in the RFP back in late January, uh, early February. The RFP went out middle of um, middle of February, and um, and a lot of you know a lot of things have changed since then, obviously. But also, we know a lot. We each know a lot more. Um, uh, since then, because of the work that we've done and the and the presentations we've um, we've heard, and um, and and uh, and and also from the um, the the proposal from from AIR has I think set forth some you know additional um, you know thinking as well, and uh, and and so taking a look at those deliverables in view of all of that. Uh, I think is is important, and uh, Jesse um, Levin over at AIR said, "Absolutely, let's let's take a look at these." Obviously, you've moved forward as a as a group, um, and um, uh, since um, uh, since it was done, and some of the things I think we may want to consider now, um, and you know, we've talked about this with the adequacy work group. Are what are the things that we're learning from the um, from the the uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, from the remote learning uh, uh, experience, and from from different instructional models. I'm not advocating any of these things, but I'm like, you know, are these things we want to be taking a look at. And then, and then, you know, it also occurred to me, of course, you know, late. I'm sure, you know, Kareen and and David were. I mean, you were you were in the middle of, or you know, in the middle of this. Um, uh, two months ago, is how do we assure preparedness and um, and continuity of opera continuity of service? Um, uh, not just saying for pandemics, but what was it? 50, uh, Twelve years ago, we had that ice storm that knocked the state out for uh, knocked a lot of districts out for five days, and um, and you know, and that was a 
you know, that was a huge thing. Five days. I mean, sort of funny to think about now. Uh, but um, are these things that we want to factor into uh, the, the work as we consider adequacy? And, um, and so, you know, the adequacy work group is going to be uh, going to be talking about that. Uh, 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 you know, and, and but I, and I think particularly for this for this work group, uh, what are the things that 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 we want to see in the scope of work, um, and and I guess aligned in the scope of work that that um, that help the public engagement um, uh, work group accomplish its tasks, and that's sort of I think where we're at right now. What the uh, what the week ahead looks like is is basically a development of this of this statement of work, and um, so today, all the work groups are going to be meeting linearly and um, and advancing the um, the 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 work that the previous work group um, uh, did. So edits that uh, that 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 you guys are doing this morning will be picked up at at one o'clock. Uh, with the uh, with the fiscal policy work group, and then picked up at um, at three o'clock with the uh, with the adequacy uh, work group, and um, and then work groups uh, as they see fit will reconvene on Thursday uh, this week to um, to do some final reviewing. I think um, uh, Bruce and Jordan and Michelle will be doing some some intervening work um, uh, uh, on that on the statement of work over the, the few days between Monday and Thursday, over the Tuesday and Wednesday. And, um, uh, and then um, uh, really by, by the end of the week, we want to have a final uh, or very, very close to final uh, uh, document ready to go. It's not to say that, that AIR will, will only be rid, rigidly adhere to that statement of work. I mean, there, there's certainly flexibility in that, but, but we want to have a pretty good definition uh, of it going going into it, and then I guess the final thing that I want to bring up is that um, is that obviously we've got you know an executive committee that's that's really uh, or an executive team that's that's uh, really sort of important to to not only helping to plan the the work group directions but the commission commission's work, and we'll be uh, meeting with with Jesse and the AAR team tomorrow. Bruce, yes, yeah, yes. that's correct. And and um, and discussing with them what we've uh, what we've been able to um, sort of accomplish with the uh, initial um, uh, considerations today, and um, uh, you know, and move that forward. So we're trying to get a lot done in a in a short amount of time. So I think I think uh, David Ryan, back to your your original question regarding the. Um, the amount of, of deliverables that are indicated in this scope of work and the short amount of time we have. I think it's, a, as David Luno said, it's a very good question, but I, my sense is as we've talked with uh, AIR, they're convinced that they are gonna be able to basically deliver on what, we're, what we've asked them to do. Uh, even though it is voluminous <laughs> in a short period of time, so. Uh, uh, and we, I think along with this, you need to know that there are going to be regular meetings uh, with AIR along this process so that we'll be able to track exactly uh, on a weekly basis exactly what they're doing. And they're very anxious to get started on this, obviously. So, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, John, John Morgan, you, there you go. Uh, so at the risk of uh, feeling like I really missed something big here, I just, when I scroll, sorry, I'm technological challenges here. Uh, when, I, when I go down to the schedule on the last page, uh, the exhibit two, I can't help but notice the uh, deliverable one and deliverable to, you know, where, uh, what's today, the 18th of May. Yeah. And both of the, both of these are due within like two weeks. And we're not even to the point where we've 
we were, we're actually moving forward on this. So this is supposed to have started almost three weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there are, are five deliverables. And so two of them are almost done and we're, we're not even, I, I just, I'm trying to understand how, how they can meet a, a timeline that has already started when we have not, is the work already underway? Yeah, let me, let me address that. So they are doing work at risk right now. John. Yeah, so we, we, the, you know, we, we won't have the contract um, signed with them until the earliest next week when the, after the commission meets. Um, you know, we want everybody, and we, you know, and we want everybody this week to, um, you know, that's why we're working to get that statement of work done, which is really going to serve as the, as the bulk of the, um, the contract. Um, um, and, uh, and be able to, to hopefully get that uh, fully executed on, on Monday. But, um, but you're, you're absolutely right. So, so you know, uh, um, uh, tight timeframes. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it kind of goes beyond tight. Um, it, just, it doesn't give me, it, it gives me a mild, mildly unsettled feeling um, to be, <laughs> to be looking at that and, and in some sort of approval capacity saying um, this looks good. Like to me, if I'm just being honest, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, which is, I think what we're, um, what we're being asked to do, I, uh, it doesn't make me feel comf confident or comfortable um, to be giving a thumbs up to something that uh, is supposedly you know, two of the five deliverables are due within two, less than two weeks. Well, they, they didn't have, like on the first deliverable, identifying data, uh, they didn't, that didn't have a, a you know, very lengthy uh, elapsed time to, um, uh, to do that. So, uh, in fact, that I, I think Jesse said the first thing that they're going to be getting is, didn't he call it onboarding the data, Bruce? Yeah, yeah, they've, they've begun that, absolutely, and we've begun to feed them that information as well. Um, so yes, that, that is underway. And I'm, that's exactly the kind of thing they would always normally do, typically do for this kind of uh, fiscal study for states. So I, I'm confident and that's why we entered, we, we decided on them as the, as the uh, contractor that they've got a process in place then they're, and that's underway. We'll be having weekly phone calls with them uh, to get updates they will uh, be available for each of the work group meetings. Uh, perhaps they won't be with the engagement work group as frequently, at least on the front end, but they will be available for all the adequacy and fiscal policy work group meetings. They'll be meeting with the commission, the full commission um, at our next full meeting on a week mm -hmm. from today, uh, a week from tomorrow actually, uh, and then as needed beyond that. So I, I, I had, <laughs> John, I think you used the term you're sort of moderately disturbed. Um, uh, my, uh, I'm uh, always uh, pretty highly disturbed by what the, the timeline here is and the scope of work and the complexity of it. And that's, that's where we live right now. Um, hopefully by uh, June, July, we'll feel like all systems are now operating uh, you know, in, in, in alignment uh, and, and getting the work done. But this mm -hmm. startup phase, uh, has been is you know that, that's the most challenging for sure. Right, right, and a and a lot of the uh, I'll just say that also that um, you know that Jay has been reaching out to Caitlin Davis. David talked to Caitlin on Friday as well. I think we have good access to uh, DOE, uh, both people and data resources uh, to the extent that they're there at this point, uh, and you know, we're hooking those folks up with um, Jesse as well right now. Dick Ames, Dick Ames, you have a question. Dick, you need to unmute yourself. There you go. There we go. Um, yeah, I just wanted to chime in. Um, a, the very good question, questions, John and David. Um, and uh, yet I think that, uh, that the process that's underway to, to um, flesh out, fully understand, the scope of work is a process that 
is starting with us, the commission and its subgroups, and uh, and then through the executive committee. But it also is with the uh, with AIR, and uh, in that process, uh, this question should be raised more with AIR and the, our executive group um, to to ensure that there's confidence on both sides of this, uh, that this work can be done. And if at the end of our internal work group process, we've uh, sort of enlarged the, the demand for work, uh, it should be AIR that pushes back at us and says, wait a minute, you've gone a step too far given the, given the time crunch that uh, we're facing and the availability of resources that we've been looking into. Um, so I, I see in the dynamic of the process this, the answer to the question, and, I, and I'm, I say that because as I participated in the screening committee, I could see the, the professionalism and confidence and experience of this team that we're uh, now going to be able to work with. And I, I have no doubt in my mind that if, uh, if we're pushing too far, we'll get a pushback. Um, so there's that. And then just to pick up on one other thing that uh, Dave said, well, as we look at this, maybe there are additional questions that this virus has, uh, has raised that uh, need to be explored. To his list, I'd add, um, what does uh, the, the uh, virus teach us about uncertainty with respect to revenue sources? And uh, what about this revenue source versus that revenue source as a source that can be relied on in ups and downs, not necessarily another virus, but something else, uh, a, a depression triggered by something different than a virus and so forth. So, uh, so that's another item that we'll explore, I imagine, in the, in the fiscal group today. Uh, but that's it. those are my comments. Thank you. I also think, uh, John, regarding uh, your question, that when we meet with uh, them tomorrow, uh, we can raise again just raise this question again with him as far as the timelines go etc so we'll i think the point is that we're going to be monitoring that very closely uh back to the uh back to the updating the dates that will would because are, are, are we going to be approving my understanding is we're going to be approving this statement of work um uh, so if we approve a statement of work, can we at least, can we have the dates updated to be, you know, within the time frame of what we're... Yeah, we can, we can deal with them when we talk with them tomorrow about that. Um, correct, uh, David Luno, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and just so folks know, I'm adding these comments to our current draft of the statement of work. So I'm, I'm noting all these things for the conversations with, with AIR. So I've, I've got that all in there. Thanks, Jordan. Thank you. Uh, other questions regarding the scope of work document, uh, any additions, concerns, uh, like uh, the date, the deadline dates, et cetera. Obviously this is um, the data that they're going to be uh, presenting uh, in their deliverables are gonna be some of the information that we're gonna be sharing in our um, groups as we go out uh, with the uh, engagement process too. So uh, there, there's a lot of work that's gonna be done in the other two work groups, but I think we're the ones that are gonna to have to take this information out and, and begin to share with uh, the stakeholder groups and then eventually the community groups. Uh, yes, uh, Kirk, Corrine. Hi, um, I, I was just thinking in terms of the schedule, I mean, Moving forward, would it make, and you probably come, will come up with this so that it's dated more uh, so that the deliverables begin June 1st. I mean, then they, technically they'd have to do deliverable one, two, and three during the month of June. I mean, if they could deliver that, then, you know, you've got the next two weeks to kind of button it up and then they can move forward. If they've got the capacity to be able to produce that. That's what we'll be checking with them on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, we may also want to take a look at, at, um, you know, some of the, you know, like some of, some of the quote, deli the deliverables, like onboarding data. 
um, you know, that's something that's, that's going to be ongoing too. It doesn't necessarily stop on June 1st. Right. Uh, uh, so, so I, I, I think, you know, applying a little bit of, of, um, not only, not only reality in terms of the dates, but actually practicality in terms of when, when, when they want to bring in, uh, you know, certain pieces of, um, of data based on what they learn, you know, we'll have to accommodate for that. And, uh, and really when you take a look at the, the, the deliverables that, um, that, that really, I think, you know, manifest in terms, will, will manifest in terms of policy coming out of this, you're looking at three, four, and then five is really an ultimate report based on three and four. Yeah. Um, and I actually don't have the document up and from looking at the, you know, Hollywood squares right, right yeah. now. But, um, um, but th those are the ones that really jumped out at, at me. And our, our commission deadline, is it, it is December? December 1st. December 1st. So there's is no the potential to bump that out. Um, so, uh, bumping it out, we, you know, is, is somewhat problematic because the, the new legislature gets sworn in December 2nd. Oh, okay. And, and that will, that will mean that, um, that, uh, any, um, uh, uh, you know, members of the commission are subject to, um, the, um, uh, statutory, um, right. nominations by the president, the speaker and yeah. Wow. It's a tough goal. No. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that that I think we learned during the um, the the uh, the reference checking was um, was that we're not we're not the only state that's operated in in you know tight time frames. We're probably the only one that's operated under these conditions, having to do all of our meetings remotely, uh, but. Um, uh, but other states have um, have have had tight uh, time frames to get this done on the order same you know order of six months, and um, and uh, and you know we asked those references specific things of what what would they do differently and and uh, what sort of recommendations they had for us and we're we're taking those steps this being one of them um, reviewing the statement of work and not just copying and pasting the proposal into a contract. So, uh, if I could interject, Mel, um, one sure. for this group on this, what's on the screen in front of us now, the scope of work. If if this group, um, either now or maybe offline today, tomorrow, would read through this and find where are the points in those various deliverables that AIR should be um, in, incorporating the uh, input from public engagement process, both the stakeholder work uh, this spring and then the September, the fall, more general public uh, community conversations. If, if you can identify specific places in here where we wanna be sure that AIR is paying attention to the input generated by the engagement process, we can mark those within this uh, draft scope of work so that, that is, uh, in, that's, so they're paying attention to that and, and alert to those points where that information may become available. That's a good addition, Bruce. Thank you very much for that suggestion. So let's, we can kind of look at that. In fact, we might even be able to identify those so that when we get together uh, on Thursday, we can right. uh, yeah. uh, embellish those points. Yeah. That'd be great. Right. Any other comments on the scope of work document? Um, no, just to, just to say that, um, the conversation this morning, and I, it, it, or just to reiterate uh, for others that some of the language that we use and and how um, we settle on how it's explained to the public and and how it gets used within the commission and within the other work groups, that's sort of um, the early end of of the work, and I'm sure that implicates the work of air a little bit as well. So. Um, but that will that will impact how we're able to communicate and have some consistent um, iterative work with with the public engagement process. Very good. Okay, are we ready to go on to the next item on the agenda? Mel, can I add a comment? Yeah, yes, yes, Dave. Thank you. And it's just from the perspective of a public school administrator. I noticed, and thanks, Jordan, for putting this draft up so we can see the additional language. 
I, because the draft I have does not include language um, around the definition of adequate education in cooperation with the DOE start task force. Yeah. A concern of mine and, and of those in public school administration is that, um, and I don't wanna politicize this process because I know we agreed not to, but in the spirit of being honest, I have grave concerns about the work of that task force in that the percentage of public school representation is about 30%, where we're serving about 90% of the students in the state that the task force is going to be addressing. And so the majority of the people on that four task force are representing a much smaller portion or a much smaller percentage of students in alternative education programming, whether it be public charter schools private schools, et cetera. And so I would hope, and this is again, just a comment for the record, I would hope that our work and this definition of adequate funding or adequate education is representative of that as well. And that we're not going to go down this battle of um, defining what is best for some and not all. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to be on, on the table with that. I've well, had some concerns relative to this in the past and just keeping it hot. So thank you. Thank, th thanks, David, David for, for making that comment because we we had an, an earlier, uh, in an earlier session today, we did talk about that. And um, there's, there, there shouldn't be, uh, there should be the same track looking at this rather than competing tracks. And so one of the, one of the things that we concluded this earlier this morning was that we do need to have a conversation uh, with the department uh, regarding their work and our work uh, to make sure that they hopefully can be uh, complementary uh, rather than competitive. Uh, David Luno, you wanted to say something too? Yeah, a couple things. And and Jordan, you're not showing all of the um, the change tracking um, on here, but yeah, there's there is a lot going on in these in these paragraphs three and four particularly. And, um, and th this, th this was sort of a little just, it was more my thinking out loud early on a Monday morning. Um, and not so much anything that that I'm, I'm, you know, wed to uh, uh, on this, but, um, but, you know, it, it certainly, uh, you know, occurs to all of us that that the department is doing some work uh, on, um, on, on the, um, restart and it uses the word redesign too, which I think brings, uh, brings up a lot of concerns. Um, probably the word cooperation is, is probably too strong, but in, it, it, I, I think we should have full view of what's going on there. And I think we should have participation on, um, uh, on, the, um, on that task force. And that's something that I think Mel and Jay are taking a look at from a legislative perspective. Uh, because there's only one, uh, Mel, is this right? There's only one legislator on the task force? Correct. Um, and that would be, that's Doug Lay, and that's through his association with AFT. Right. So it's not even, not even in the legislative context. Um, so, um, uh, so that, that's something that, that's looking at, but also, and, and we got into, a, a you know, discussion of, of this this morning too, at our, at our, um, uh, uh, with Mel and Jay and, and Bruce uh, is, um, is, you know, what goes into adequacy, our outcomes part of adequacy, things like that. And I think these are going to be much larger full commission discussions when, uh, when we take a look at this. And, and I think the adequacy work group is going to be talking about um, this as well. So, um, so some very large sort of structural um, elements to, um, to, what goes into uh, what really what goes into tasks three and four. I appreciate okay. the attention to that, Dave. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Further comments on the uh, scope of work. Thank you for those. Those are. Could, those could are I make a suggestion, Mel? Very helpful. Yeah. Um, so if mm. if. Um, if if this um, meeting this morning is, isn't going to continue working, which is fine, um, I, I hope the the members can can um, can uh, 
put together comments uh, uh, just you know on the doc file, email them to to Michelle, um, uh, who who can you know because we 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 really need to bring the comments together. It's it's a very comprehensive document, and so comments anywhere are important. And um, and and then uh, Michelle and Bruce and Jordan can can really sort of integrate those comments into a document that we can all take a look at on Thursday. Um, following early input, following input from, from Jesse um, over at AIR, and, um, and then we can, um, we can hopefully get to, uh, get to a, a final uh, work product um, uh, late this week. Okay, good. All right, so let's, uh, let's move to the uh, uh, timeline uh, of infra, uh, the timeline that we're gonna be dealing with the engagement. And I guess I'd like to, I like to kind of turn this to Michelle. Uh, she uh, developed this draft uh, for our uh, work group meeting today. And Michelle, why don't you uh, kind of go through the draft and um, so we can begin to look and react to that. Okay. So um, mm -hmm. I pulled some, some of this is in the overall summary that you got last time, but I, I pulled it out mm -hmm. so that we can, um, start to focus first on the state the stakeholder online focus groups that we want to run in June and then just to get a sense of the timeline um, and so I think mostly um, I want to get your your feedback on uh, the June focus groups but let me just walk through a couple of things first so we are we are um, talking about focusing um, having online focus groups, specifically targeting folks who are um, have experience with uh, working with um, school budgets, so school board, boards, municipal folks, um, school leaders on the budget, you know, and the budget side of things, um, people who are raising the money and spending the money. Um, and uh, we were, um, I'm proposing that we have two waves um, of uh, groups, they're all the same, but in terms of scheduling, um, that there be a wave in the second week of June and, and a wave in the fourth week of June, just because schools are ending at different times. And um, I was just trying to, to be comprehensive there. Um, uh, our contract calls for 12 focus groups in, in different region and, at regions and a target of around 100, 120 people this would be 12 focus groups um, and the, the outreach would be done to get regional coverage, but in any given focus group, we're hoping for a mix across the state so that the focus group, you know, on Tuesday at one uh, is not for a particular reason, uh, region, um, they would have a mix of people. So, you, you know, you would hope you might have people from uh, various locations all in the same focus group. Um, Michelle, it says it says in six regions. Didn't we talk about nine regions we last did. time? Yep, we did. Um, so I'll change that. Um, although I and think that those, was a reference to the contract, um, the original. And don't and again, those nine regions for those who, just as a reminder for everyone, those are the nine planning regions across the state, which have an organized, <clears throat> an organized entity that meet on a regular basis. And that was a reason why in our last meeting we had on the seventh that we decided we would go with those planning regions, so. Great. Um, so I, you know, I have some, some questions for you about the schedule and, and how to run them. You know, one of the, um, one of the questions that I have is, is just in terms of uh, technically recording and posting or if people are, are joining like they join the webinar um, by phone but are, and are listening and not participating. Um, and then uh, right now my suggestion is that there be three different times on four different days across those two weeks. Um, and that in the invitation people can um, click in and, and pick the time that works best for them. So again, just to repeat that all 12 are the same, so you only participate in one, and that our hope is to get um, a mix of attendees across all. 
Um, so let me just pause there. I have uh, questions for discussion there, um, but any um, initial thoughts or feedback on the schedule or this focus for the June focus groups, stakeholder focus? We, and we did earlier <clears throat> in an earlier document had indicated the uh, various stakeholder groups uh, that we would be drawing these names from. So uh, we we have those groups already identified. And the the um, in the full page that you're referring to, Mel, that's all the stakeholders for everything. And for this June June groups, we're focusing on. A subset of that, which our folks Correct. have experienced with. Correct. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, are there questions re regarding the the um, initial uh, cut of this uh, for these focus groups that they're primarily those who have been dealing with school budgets, uh, costing, et cetera, that they are folks who have been engaged in this process that have some knowledge. <clears throat> that can bring some feed, some immediate feedback to the commission on some of their concerns that we need to focus on uh, in uh, the other work groups. And that's the initial. That's the initial cut uh, of these uh, public engagements that we're going to have. Are there any questions around that? Okay, Michelle. <clears throat> um, for this, I'll. T I th the reasoning for starting with this group is because um, they are the, they're a group with a lot of with experience um, and we're not so much defining a lot of things for them, things that in some ways are still <clears throat> being defined. So we're sort of starting with a group that we don't necessarily need to fully explain the process to and to ask them what do we most want, um, what, do, what do they most want the commission to consider. Whereas as we move further into the stakeholder group that gets more and more into lay people, for example, we'll want to have more of that wrapped up so that we're able to, um, you know, make sure we're framing the conversation with, with helpful definitions uh, that will carry forward. Um, is this focus on municipal and school budget and, and electeds and appointeds um, do you, is that an okay starting place? Does anyone have concerns or questions about that group as our beginning focus for June? I've not seen any. Okay. Um, um, I, I would just have a quick comment on that. Um, uh, we should, um, um, you, you, I shouldn't say we should, that's not it. Um, but but are we are we going to consider um, I, I guess the um, the districts who are who have been uh, either involved in the conval suit or or um, have um, been part of the amicus brief um, on there just because I, I think they've they've already been you know. They're, they're vocal in terms of share of of um, wanting to have their voices heard when it comes to budgets and things like that. So, is that a is that a question? It's maybe? sort of a question, but just <laughs> make, you know. Uh, well, of course, as a reminder. Um, both states attorneys represent uh, attorney general's office representing the state and then the plaintiffs attorneys and amicus <clears throat> attorneys will be making presentations to uh, the adequacy and fiscal policy work groups on June 1st so they'll they'll be definitely input from mm -hmm. at least from right. those um, representatives of those uh, positions <clears throat> I think David your question is is that as we identify individuals to participate in these focus groups should individuals who have been engaged in the amicus or the actual suit itself should they be excluded 
uh, because of their because of their access to voice at this point in time, particularly as it relates to what Bruce just said. Um, I, yeah, I'm 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 not I'm not asking if they should be. So I'm I'm just want, wanting to make sure that that people's the, that that voices are um, being you know considered. So uh, on okay. this. So. Okay. Good point. All right. That's been heard, Michelle. Mm -hmm. My, my, one of my other questions is um, with Zoom, there's two ways that we can do this because the focus groups aren't public meetings, but we want them to be as transparent as possible. Um, one is that we record the focus groups um, and post them, you know, as soon as we can afterwards. The, one of the things that would give us flexibility for that is if we get a lot of people registering at the same time, we can have multiple um, and we won't, uh, it'll be hard to kind of keep up with making sure people can access in real time uh, in that situation. Um, the other option is that we would run them kind of like we've been running commission meetings with phone guests listening into the focus groups, but then we would just have to have one at a time. And, and if people register multiple people in, in, in one time frame, we'd have to max it out and, and cut it off. So I'm just wondering what's required and what's preferred in terms of being transparent around mm -hmm. focus groups. And if it's a focus group, would we be you know, I want people to feel like they can share their thoughts um, and not feel uh, too in the middle of a fishbowl. Um, so I'll stop there. Mel, did you want to take that or? No, I, I'm just, I'm thinking. <laughs> you have a comment, David? Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I'm I'm hoping as 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 we get more experience under our belt with with the Zoom webinar platform, that that we'd be able to um, to to take um, you know take comments uh, from from people from from attendees, certainly at work group meetings and and eventually commission meetings. Uh, uh, but but for the for these for for the um, for the focus groups, yeah. I mean, I I, I mean, I think I. You, you, are you going to be using Zoom webinar? If we, I, I'm inclined to use Zoom meeting, um, so that we can have more than one at a time and then post the recording. But oh, if we use okay. Zoom webinar webinar, we can do that they'll just, it'll, they'll just be one. Mm -hmm. And would you be using a, um, and so the, you, you said the, these aren't, these aren't meetings that anybody can join. These are meetings that you've got a focused um, a group that you're reaching out to. Right. And they'd be admitted through a, uh, what's called the waiting room. Right. As we go forward, there are other gatherings that that will either be wide open or will target families and students or. Okay. Okay. But, but these are, these, these are primarily focus groups by invitation and they would be the focus group conversation would be closed to those particular focus attendees. Correct. Because we're seeking a population who's right. served on school boards, town councils, mm -hmm. right. select boards. So with these, with these, um, David, do these meetings have to be posted in a calendar? Um, no, no, I, I, I don't think these have to. I be don't posted think so either, because these are these are just focus groups. They're not right. official meetings of a work group or of. Right. A, no, that's that's yeah, right. Well, yeah. you know, the, the 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 reason we're posting the work group meetings in the calendars because I think there's a lot of people who are really interested in. Yeah. in and what we're talking about. I hope there are people interested in what yeah. we're talking about. Um, 
and and certainly the this work group will be talking about what it learns from the from the focus groups and we want to make sure that members of the public can uh, can hear what that uh, what that is and um and you know by by rights um you know because we don't have a quorum of the of the commission on this group um it doesn't have to be posted but we want to make sure that these work group meetings are 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 open and available to uh, to members of the public and um, just ask the commission meetings are but uh, but no i think your 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 focus group meetings um don't um um don't have to have that um as long as you know what you learn from it you're talking about during work group meetings right exactly yeah. right they reported back yeah okay michelle what's that what's next all right um so I, I wrote this probably in um, in there, and I and mostly I want to um, move us to focus on what are the main questions that we need to ask. And um, you know, there is a place here where I've written fiscal inadequacy. <laughs> um, I think I think as the um, uh, fiscal inadequacy work groups grapple with um, definitions and how we're going to talk about this, that will impact certainly how we talk about that with this group. So right now, I think it's important just to think, um, you know, what are the questions that we want to ask? Um, and in some ways, because this is our, um, our close experience to group with grappling with budgets, um, I'm, I want you to kind of keep their experience in mind as we think about what's most important to ask them. And certainly we want to ask them, um, you know, uh, what do you want the commission to pay attention to? What do you want the commission to know? But from there, what stands out to you as what's important to ask this particular group? And there are questions in the, in the thing that we've already brainstormed that I'm curious if you have thoughts about. So what questions do we need to ask? The other, the, uh, and we got this list here. The other, the other um, issue is, is that there may be from the other two work groups, based upon the preliminary conversations that they've had so far, they may have some questions that they would like to throw into this, uh, to this mix, too. So I think, I think Dave, Dave and um, Bruce, as you work with all of the work groups here. That might be a query uh, for them to consider uh, as it relates to as before we finalize the list before the first uh, June 9th meeting that they might want to have some additional questions that they might want to ask. Is that, do you see that as a possibility? I mean, I'm going back to the conversation that we had this morning. <laughs> And that when we were dealing with, uh, for those of you that, that weren't in the meeting, we were dealing with adequacy and, and uh, a, a kind of accountability around that whole issue. And uh, it was a very, very intense conversation <laughs> that we were having. Um, but I would think that the other work groups might in the next week or two uh, have some questions that they say they might want to ask these experienced stakeholders that are coming together in this first wave that we're going to be dealing with. I think it's a great idea. That definitely makes sense. I've made a note to that effect as well. And just as another reminder <clears throat> for the folks here and those listening, the, um, the adequacy and fiscal policy work groups uh, later this week will be hearing from school, school finance, school budget officers. And so that's kind of a, a very focused focus conversation within work groups to hear from um, school finance officers about what, what do you, as you deliver uh, an education at the district level uh, based on statutes and uh, uh, DOE standards and regulations, <clears throat> where are the pressure points? Um, how are you managing your budgets? Where are there uh, particular expenditures that you're uh, regularly confronting that perhaps fall outside of the current definitions of adequacy? So we'll, we'll be getting some good on the ground input uh, from that source as well. So there are you know, really multiple input and engagement uh, strands going on in this whole effort. 
this work group, um, of course, is really charged with um, interfacing with larger the stakeholders and constituents and the greater public. But in the meantime, <laughs> other elements, other pieces of the commission's work are also hearing uh, from uh, interested parties, affected parties in this whole process. <clears throat> so Mel, can, yeah. can you make a note to, um, to bring that up during the commission meeting on the 26th? Sure, yeah. That, that uh, public engagement work group is, would like to solicit questions from adequacy and fiscal policy and talk a little bit about this forum engagement process and, and um, um, that would be great. Yeah, we can do that. And I think, cause I think as you look at the, uh, I, th there's nothing to prohibit um, New Hampshire listens to begin to populate the um, engagement, the focus groups, the, the, the individuals for the focus groups, uh, because uh, the first focus group will take place obviously a uh, about a week after the full commission meeting on the 26th, mm -hmm. starting on, well, it's more than that. Actually, we would have a work group meeting. Um, we'd have a work group meeting on the 6th Correct. Uh, excuse me. No, I'm looking at the wrong one. On um, we would have a work group meeting on the first, actually, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. yep. We'd have a work group meeting on the first, and you could schedule them anytime. Where, where where we could then finalize the questions from both the work group and commission members. So there's some time. I guess what I'm saying, uh, Michelle, there's some time to hone those questions based upon the various inputs from both the total commission on the 26th and also as we begin to engage the work groups between now and then to seek some questions that they may may have too. Correct. Mm -hmm. So and, I don't think we need to finalize the questions today is what I'm saying. Okay. And we've got some time because I think we can get some good input from the other folks too. I mean, Absolutely. these are good questions. I think we've got good questions here, but I think uh, they, it would be, it might be more relevant coming from some of those who are having these conversations on an ongoing basis. Okay. And maybe what we'll do um, after listening into the other um, work group conversations is, is narrow them down a little bit um, yeah. for that final con for the conversation on the 26th. Um, so, so John, so, so John and Dave Ryan, I'm just, are you <clears throat> okay with uh, holding on, finalizing the questions based upon the input from the general commission members uh, from the 26th and also the other work groups that are out there. Are you guys all right with that? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay. So we'll, we'll hold on the final questions and Michelle, you can move forward in populating those focus groups that we are going to have with individuals and then we can finalize these on, on our last uh, work group meeting uh, that, uh, that first part of June. Okay, right. and I'll, I'll work with, um, I'll share with you, Mel, and I'll work with Bruce and Jordan to kind of um, make sure we have the invitation language um, yeah. where we, um, so that, that uh, you can let me know, maybe we'll send that to the engagement worker. Actually, I'll have it for Thursday. I have it mostly, but um, uh, I was checking on a few things with Bruce just to make sure that's all ready to go. Right. Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm looking at our agenda here. <clears throat> so uh, we're going to hold on the questions. We got the schedule. Um, we got a little timeline for the engagement. Uh, are there other issues on the, on our agenda for today? Um, there's two more. One is, is, um, Bruce, were you thinking about the invitation language and sharing that? Is that what you're? Uh, I'm, I'm going to take your draft. I'll give you, I'll send comments back on your okay. draft to you um, in okay. the next half hour. All right. Then the, the other question that I had is, is just, um, there are, there's a student voice um, component to the work that New Hampshire listens we'll be doing with families um, that's proposed for the fall. There's also a, some work that's being done by Reaching Higher 
to engage students. And I'm wondering, can we, how will the commission access the work from reaching hard that they're doing to, to in, involve students and, and can the engagement work group that, you know, include that um, information or is it, should it be considered something else that reaching higher reports out to the commission on? Is that a clear, not a very clear question, but to folks when, understand. Uh, when, when, are, when are they, do we know when they're planning on, on doing this uh, activity? Um, we can ask them this afternoon, but I think, uh, I, I think originally it was going to be sooner, but I think at this point it probably is a, Later. I guess it's a, an early fall. Yeah, I think they're running a couple of pilots, but they have to do it all online now. So I think they've really pushed their timeline into the fall. Well, let's check with them to make sure we know what their, what their process is going to be, and then we can report back to the group here. Uh, okay. And then move forward on that. All right, this, this Canada and I are talking, I think, Wednesday, so I'll be checking. Great, okay. <clears throat> I think the other thing, too, uh, on the survey, I would hope uh, uh, both Bruce and, and David Luno that um, I know it's not a primary focus for the other work groups, but that they can also begin to realize that there's, that by August, we need to have some form of specific questions that they might want to have put on the UNH survey that would then be conducted uh, uh, in, sep in September. So uh, just, just make them aware that we need to have their input on that too. Okay. Right. And my, my question, Mel, on the timeline for that, and I'm not sure that, that both are possible or, or necessary, but if, if the survey can be used to find current, especially post-COVID, um, current views, or it could be used in later in the process once the commission has um, made some decisions to get impact input on um, sort of the current direction at the end of the timeline. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's two different uses of a, of a survey that just gives you people's re responses to either what is currently or, or an idea that they're hearing coming from the commission. And so I just wanted to put that out there as a decision. Yeah. My, my understanding is, is that the survey center needs to have whatever we want on, that, on their September survey that that needs to be into them, what, by mid-August? Uh, mid yes, yeah. Okay, so I think um, depending upon where the other work groups are, uh, there may be, as you're suggesting, Michelle, there may be uh, some items that they might wanna put on there just to test um, reactions to from the survey, from the work of the other, from the funding and from the fiscal and from the adequacy work groups. That's what you're suggesting, correct? Um, I guess for, if we're definitely using the September survey, then I guess maybe Bruce will chime in on this. It's what whatever's most useful for September. Mm -hmm. I think the other piece was if if we haven't if it's just asking people where what current thing without new information from the commission should it be considered that a survey be done later when there's something for people to respond to that's that's newer and I, yeah, I, I so that was i think that's a possibility um and and i think we can figure out within our budget and within the reserves that are currently set aside, um, we could do a, a sort of a broader uh, taking the pulse in September um, with a little bit of uh, context from the commission. But then, as the, if the commission, as the commission makes its recommendations and put, moves them forward to the legislature in December, um, we could do a survey in, in 
late December or even January uh, testing um, public responses to the recommendations that are going forward. Because we, big, we, we if. I don't know if you even want to know. So anyway, that's well, we, we, do, we process. don't forget, we do have uh, in the October, we have these community conversations that are going on too. Right. Yeah. And it would seem to me that if you have the community conversations testing some of the scenarios or some of the data that we've gathered, along with, at the, at the same time, some kind of a random sampling survey that goes out uh, with some of the same content that would be in the community conversations, it would seem to me you would then get a fairly rich, uh, a rich result or a rich response uh, to those kind of common themes that we would get through the random survey as well as community focus groups. Yep. That, would, okay. that would give us a, f a fairly good foundation for the concepts that uh, we're beginning to play with uh, as we move down to the final, final acts here. So I, I, would think, I would think what we might want to add to the survey components to this is not only uh, one that we might do in September, that would be a little different than what we might want to do later. So I think there may be, we may be dealing with two different kinds of surveys here. Yeah. Okay, no, but, I, that, but that the survey, um, be ready to, sh to get that in, in the middle of August and right. the data from that can be used in the uh, October. Right, exactly. Yeah. Potentially right. in the September, October right. with families and students. Right. Okay. Okie doke. So, um, how are we doing on the agenda then, Michelle? Are we kind of concluded the discussions on those items? I think we have. I think okay. um, I, th I think the one thing uh, that we will do is make sure all the work groups um, are thinking about what questions to ask in this first set of stakeholders and that um, maybe we bring a, um, a narrow list of questions if, if we hear back for the 26th yeah. commission group. Okay. Okay. So if, uh, have we concluded then our agenda for today? I mean, we've got, uh, we do have, and I do think we need to still focus on that uh, on the 21st uh, from three to five, because at that point in time, we'll be able to look at a little more of the the uh, scope of work uh, finalization um, on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, you know, something else for uh, Thursday, three to five, Mel, let's, um, uh, I'm going to obviously uh, be there, but, um, but maybe we should also have Jay try to join public engagement on the three to, if he can, on the yeah. three to five, uh, because that's gonna be the final work group look before final, you know, clean up over the weekend before we bring it to the full commission on um, on the 26th. All right, good. So, I mean, basically public engagement's getting the final, the you know, the final, it gets the first crack and the final crack at the uh, statement of work. Um, I, so, Ahead, Sorry, Michelle. Dave. No, no, no. Well, go ahead. So I guess, you know, especially John and, and David Ryan, um, if you think about there's the one page of those part of the full summary that lists all stakeholders that we've been trying to brainstorm to make sure that we're reaching. And and right now, um, you know, we have uh, the June focus groups that you know the focus of the outreach for those. The survey is a broad random sample. Um, there's a student and family focus and a, a broad community conversation focus. Um, and I'm wondering if there's, if, if as you think about all the stakeholders, um, is there a gap um, in terms of who we're, we're reaching out to um, that should, that isn't being covered by, you know, direct, um, uh, you know, testament to the commission or in other other places through the research 
is there a gap that you notice and you may not be able to pick up on it right now but just make sure that you think about that a little bit let us know um, who we're missing john john um new hampshire is the second oldest state in the country most rapidly aging state in the country and um i think that there is a a broad conception misconception however you want to frame it uh that are uh, that there are a, an incredible number of people proportionally who pay into our, our current educational funding system and don't have, um, uh, don't have kids in the system. Um, so I think that that's uh, a, a reality that we have to acknowledge. And I, I don't really, I mean, I see the statewide community conversations um, but I don't, I don't see, uh, Dr. Ryan, what, what was it that, did you, did you say it? Did my father say it? Something about like, remember that 80% of the people who pay into the system don't have, yeah. um, don't have kids in the system. Yeah. It was your dad. And you said it to me when I sat on that couch right there, Yeah, uh, probably about four years ago. And um, it's, 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 an actu it's an accurate statistic, particularly within our region. And it's a point that I brought up, I think, in our first or second full commission meeting. I'm um, right. Uh, I remember you both saying it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, I learned it from your, from your father. So um, I, I just, you know, I think that this is phenomenal for the record, the, the, the way, the process that we're going about doing this. But I think ignoring or not very directly um, engaging with that demographic, I think it sets us up for failure um, with with what outcome we're, we're seeking to achieve. My two cents. So, so the point I think, uh, uh, John, is that how do we identify um, to ensure that the aged population is engaged in this thing? And I also have concerns about uh, race uh, and also poverty. Um, and I'm assuming that we're going to be able to deal with some of those. Um, th those, would be, those would be my other two that I would add to yours to, to ensure that we have that population uh, engaged in some fashion. That's All right. really helpful. Yeah. Uh, other, other comments for the good of the order before we sign off and uh, regain our group uh, on the uh, 21st? So I think uh, a couple of quick ones, Mel, um, okay. and following on John's um, um, uh, suggestion there, which I think is very good, is, um, is also this con concept, and we've talked about it at full commission meetings, we talk about it at fiscal policy work group meetings, um, is this concept of fiscal neutrality and how that applies in an interdistrict as well as how it may apply in an intra-district um, um, uh, concept. And... Um, uh, and so that may be something that we want to consider, particularly with um, with with the eighty percent that are paying in that don't don't specifically have students um, uh, uh, in the system, but uh, are are certainly indirectly benefiting from from having a um, a skilled and educated you know workforce. I mean, we all have indirect benefits from. I mean, some direct as well and indirect benefits from that. Um, the, um, the, the other point I wanted to make, and Kareen uh, has brought it up, is, um, is uh, what's our plan as far as more broad notification via the media um, uh, of for what the commission's doing? And I, I think it's something that, that is probably a good, a good question to be tackled through the through public engagement work group and then go up through our, our executive um, uh, team uh, to, to push out as, as a news release. And um, obviously I think we've got one, I mean, you know, we, 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 we looked at putting one out about two months ago and I think we quickly were, I mean, this was around the time uh, Carsey School came on board um, you know, formally came on board, and we we quickly identified the fact that that two months ago nobody uh, was paying attention to anything other than COVID nineteen, um, 
and you know uh, now certainly COVID-19 is still the central media focus but uh, but I think people are looking for other news these days too. What are you doing um, about school funding? What are you doing property taxes? What are you doing about um, about you know these these problems that that we've uh, had in New Hampshire uh, for a long time now? And um, and and you know tell me you're moving forward on that. So um, so uh, maybe some some thoughts for uh, for a schedule of news releases that might coincide with public engagement efforts mm -hmm. and, um, and other work that the, um, that the commission is doing. But, uh, but also particularly, I think, you know, uh, looking to bring on our research partner uh, in the next week or so, maybe focusing on something um, uh, around that, you know, uh, 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 ha you know, uh, 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 bringing on the, the, our partnership with the university um, and the Carsey School. Uh, bringing on um, uh, outside research consultant and um, and um, you know because uh, I, I think it would be our first meet would this be our first media release yes it, it would um, and I'll just remind you that we also are trying to use our website um, as an important source of broad communication so we, we need to update add uh, more current blogs to give progress reports, uh, including information about the contract and mm -hmm. where the work groups are and so on. And I, and it may be that folks that are really paying attention to this process and to the commission's work are more likely to go on a regular basis to our websites to get updated than um, us trying to get uh, the media to pay attention to the fact that we've hired a contractor that might show up in a brief article one time so I just, I think in terms of effective communication, let's be sure we're using our website and using our social media to push people you know, to the website as well. But Dave, what I'm hearing too is just that we can, um, this work group can consider where some of the um, primary communication points might be throughout the engagement process and include that in our timeline. Well, yeah, and 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 I think it, it it also I think you know goes in with Senator Morgan's point about about um, you know the demographic here in in New Hampshire. Not everybody's picking up everything from from Facebook or Twitter, and um, uh, and 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 you know, and just speaking for myself, I like to see uh, you know I try to gather stuff from a variety of different information sources, and um, and you know seeing something in the Concord Monitor or the Union Leader or Seacoast Online, I think has has uh, has has benefits to just really broadening the scope of of who we're reaching out to, and uh, you know, and I think especially right now, and 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 you know, John and Mel are acutely aware of this, with with so much legislative activity, really, you know, you know, sort of formal legislative activity being on hold, that um, that that. You know that our commission has has been able to um, to move ahead over the last few months and uh, and letting people know that I mean you know we're we're you know sort of coming off um, uh, uh, and in Hopkins we're still in the middle of uh, uh, school funding season and um, uh, I, I I think it's a I think it's a ripe um, topic to let people know what we're doing. I mean, is it? Would it be appropriate to have a news conference? I, I don't know. I, you mean like a Zoom news conference? Well, yeah. you know, I mean, the, the governor's governor's having a report every week with the media. I, I, I think I'm let's, let, no, no, I think it's a good idea. But I think let's let's start with with something that we can push out to media. You know, we can we can we can, you know, uh, obviously put it on Facebook and put it on the website and put it on other things, too. But um, but you know, there's still something nice about reading reading a story in in the Union Leader, or the Concord Monitor, or Seacoast, or my, my, I guess my point is is that it would seem to me that in in each of those media outlets you talked about that there's a contact, and that contact then we can continue to deal with so that they're they're aware of what's going on. Uh, and feed them information on a regular basis 
for their particular outlet, whether it be newspaper, radio, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, so that they, you know, you, you've got a network of people who become informed about this stuff. So that as we come down to the final reports, et cetera, it's not new information to them. It's just an ongoing kind of a feed, so to speak. I've Absolutely. And, you know, Frank Bass is doing, I, I don't know, is, is he still doing his weekly uh, Concord Cable yeah. show? I mean, Mel, you and I were, you know, uh, on that. And, and <laughs> but, you know, a, any of these things I think would be, would be great because, you know, people, people get their, their information from a variety of different sources yeah, and, yeah. Uh, want to make sure we're we're hitting as many as possible so i think you, you've raised an issue that we may want to consider uh more is that what is the media what's the media strategy for getting information out to people not to, and I, i'm not just talking about a news release here mm -hmm. yeah. i'm talking about cre creating within the media structure in people who can become informed on a regular basis about what we're doing and that they, they may not do anything with the information at the specific time we contact them, but you build their knowledge base of what is going on so that they can be, uh, they can report appropriately. Comprehensive communication strategy. Yeah. Exactly right, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Add that to the list. Got it. <laughs> Okay, folks, anything else before we uh, sign off here? Uh, David, uh, John, you're good? Uh, what, one o'clock fiscal policy. Yeah, yeah. Two o'clock uh, adequacy is joining us. And uh, we're going to hear at two o'clock from Reaching Higher New Hampshire. Three o'clock adequacy continues. And it's the same link that everybody used to, to get here, same um, dial in numbers. And um, and I, I if I, I think the reaching higher presentation is going to be um, incredibly interesting to listen to, so I'd certainly encourage anybody that's available to um, to tune in. Okay, is anything else for the good of the order? Thanks, folks. See you on Great. Thursday, if not before. Thanks. Very good. Right. Bye bye. Take care. Thanks, all.